go ahead and enter your name and the time that you showed up in chat and I will be able to save that and review it later. Um, again, just so you know, this is this Zoom meeting is for your benefit. It will be recorded, it is being recorded, and it will be posted in our YouTube playlist. So hopefully you know where that YouTube playlist is. I think I'll share my screen so you're not just having to look at me. And we will, first of all, I should probably, uh, I want to admit everyone. So that's one of the things that I think I'm going to make a, an announcement today. So it is now 10.05 and we still have folks joining the um, meeting, which is fine. But um, I'm going to make this declaration if you can't show up on time then you probably are going to have to wait until it gets posted on YouTube because this is just one extra distraction for me which I'm not really uh, it, it's just very distracting to have to go to see who, <clears throat> excuse me who's in the waiting room so if uh, I'll probably come back and let folks in if I think about it but just as a rule, I think it's a good good habit for us to get in to be on time. If you can't be on time, I totally understand that. Um, and I would hate to penalize anyone for not being able to show up on time. But the reality is it's a little challenging for me to have to go here and there and the other place. It's just it, it distracts from the quality of the content, which I know. I get it. The quality of this content in this meeting is already somewhat questionable, at least it seems to me to be. Because if, put yourself in my shoes, if you had to sit here and look at a camera and not have any interaction except when it's an accident, like Monica's little accident, which was great, it gets pretty boring. I get that. So I'm going to be paying attention to the chat uh, and I want to you know, answer questions as they come up. So I'm gonna try and have the chat showing and I will not be able to check on admitting folks. So I'm gonna to try to admit folks today, but it means I have to click somewhere else on my screen and find that participants. And so here we go, I'm gonna admit and then I'm gonna close that and I have to open it up again to do that. So, um, oh my bad, lots of laughs. Yeah, it's not that funny, but LOL, I'm kidding. It is not that, it's no big deal. It just is, I think that's what we're gonna do in the future. So again, if you can't be on time and I don't admit you, and I just want you to know it's not because I'm mean, it's not because, uh, you know, you're being penalized. It's just because I can't, it's, I have to open different screens to do different things. So here we go. Uh, oh, so this is how the online course is coming along. I want to mention that you will see in week four, we have three topics. So in week four, hopefully you can see my pointer and you see we have getting started profile setup and I just spent a little time walking you through that um, and so you'll see I actually created a post each post has a video you should the way I set this up is you should kind of be required to watch the video before you can move on to the next lesson so if you would text in I need, I, I wanna ask a couple questions and I'm gonna let you use the chat box to answer the questions. Um, but the first question is, have you uh, registered as a user? I think everyone has, but if you haven't, just let me know. Uh, if you have not registered as a user at moneystudygroup.com, which is actually, you can probably already see that, but it's, Money Study Group is a redirect. It goes to millennialwealthcare.com. So just a little in the weeds there. But if you go to moneystudygroup.com, it'll take you right to the page that you can click on and go enroll. So if you've not enrolled, I need to know. If you've not, 
registered, I need to know. The next question is, have you enrolled? So again, if you go to that page at moneystudygroup.com, you will see course the course. And if you're not logged in to the course, if you haven't purchased the course, you can be logged into the site, but not enrolled in the course. So that means you haven't paid for the course. It's $49.95. You need to do that to be enrolled in the course because you're not going to see this week's content. You're not going to see next week's content. You're not going to see any more content that you're going to need to do your assignments moving forward. So again, your assignments will be posted. Um, your, your assignments will be posted to Blackboard. So that's how you're going to get your grade, but you won't really be able to do the assignment accurately or completely if you haven't done the lessons here at moneystudygroup.com. So if you've already registered and you're not enrolled, that means, um, yeah, you already registered, but now I am enrolled. So if you're enrolled, that means you paid. If you haven't paid, you won't be enrolled. If you paid and you're not enrolled, there's a problem. And typically what I'm finding is the problem is your username is different than your PayPal or however you paid, but whatever the problem is, I can get it fixed really quick. You just need to let me know. Uh, <laughs> cool, I'm glad you figured that out, Jazz. Jazz. So cool. Um, so again, if you can figure it out on your own, that's great. But if you need my help, I'm happy to help. That's been a lot more. Okay, so John, um, I think John, I'm gonna make a note here which every class period I make a note. I'm actually making the note on this paper here because even though I have all these wonderful tools, technology tools, somehow having a paper with a list makes it easy for me to do it before I get home. So John, I'm gonna make sure, now you might wanna email me, John, your receipt. If you'll do that, you can email me. I'll tell you how to email me. This is the email I'm using for the course, jim at familywealthbuilder.com. So just if you, ha John, if you'll email me your receipt, I'll make sure that you get enrolled. Uh, and anyone else who has that problem, that'll be what I'll ask you to do. You get a receipt when you pay on PayPal um, or pay with a credit card, however you pay. Drink water. Thanks, John. Okay, so <clears throat> I want to just spend a little, a little, um, so John, are you, oh, okay, cool. That's privately, sorry, got it. Um, let's see, I want to spend a few minutes and just show you, which I did this in the video, but I don't know if I did a very good job. So you're, you're seeing my screen now, and I just want you to notice, I have two different profiles. So this could be student A and student B. In this case, it's actually client A and client B. So from my perspective, you are all clients. And when you, when you log in or register at the portal, which is a totally different element than registering at Money Study Group, that's a WordPress site, that's, a, uh, that's where the course is being housed that's where the content from the course is being delivered and that's where you're consuming that content but there's a whole nother step which we went over uh, early on and by the way i learned something next semester when we do this course i'm not even going to tell you about logging into or registering at bayrock until week three or four because it was just too confusing, and I'm sorry for that. So there was step one, register at moneystudygroup.com. Step two, register online at Bayrock. Step three, download the mobile app. And you should have all done that by now. But again, little scope and sequence issue. In the future, we'll keep it simple and just do one step per week. But what we're looking at now is I am inside of a profile for a client or a student uh, who has already registered at Bayrock in, in the planning portal. So this is 
client A, student A. And now I'm going to jump over here and I want you to just start to look at the, some distinctions because as we go through your capstone, which is a big part of the course, you're, here, hold on, I want to go let some people in. There we go, sorry about that. So for those of you coming late, I'm just going to say this again. Uh, this is the last Zoom meeting that we're going to do where I'm going to admit people after, let's say, five minutes after 10, just because I, I can't handle the distraction of having to, I have to go into a different place to do that. So sorry, I keep repeating that for those of you who were respectful enough to the group to be here on time. For those of you who can't be here on time, you're not being penalized. You'll just have to wait for the recording if you can't show up by five minutes after 10. So sorry about that. Thank you again for that public service announcement. So again, what I'm showing you here is two students, two clients, client A, client B, student A, student B. And I want you to start to see some distinctions because <clears throat> what I'm showing you here is a student who is just beginning or a client who is just setting up their portal. They haven't even finished entering their income, their savings, their net worth, their expenses, their goals. So they have a very limited amount of information in their portal, as opposed to this student or this client, B, client B, student B, who has already progressed through several stages. So you see here, I hope you can see here at the top, we've got, we've got everything that was in the first student, these five, these six things, family profile, income, savings, net worth, expenses, and goals. That doesn't go away once you complete it. But what happens is on my end, I open up some more modules and you'll start to see up here at the top, we have investment, which is coming for you. So in the investment portal, when I click on investment, I'm just giving you kind of a snapshot of what's coming for you because a big part of this course is investment, how to, build a portfolio, how to manage the portfolio, and how to invest. It's always been the most popular topic. So it's a big part of the course. And as we develop your capstone, your capstone assignment is worth 200 points. It's the final uh, assignment in the course. And what's going to happen is I'm going to create a report. And that report is going to be based on everything that you've put into your planning portal. So along the way, I'm going to be giving you some coaching and some tools, and I'm going to be opening up additional modules in your planning portal. And so we're just getting started, and you're doing great. Some of you are trying to work ahead, which is awesome. Um, and some of you are like, is this all there is or what am I supposed to do? And, and that's fine, too. So just trust me that I'm going to walk you through the process and we're going to use this portal, your planning portal to develop your capstone assignment so that at the end of this course, you're going to have a comprehensive financial plan. Now, some of you may be thinking that doesn't really move the needle for me because having a comprehensive financial plan at your stage when you don't really have any savings, you don't really have any investments, you're not even really sure about what your goals are. I get it. It may sound like we're trying to hunt squirrels with a 30-06. And if you're not a hunter, let me just tell you, I, my favorite rifle is a 30-06. It's a nice, beautiful, Italian-made rifle. And when I set it up at the gun range, I set it and I squeeze it and I can hit a buffalo. It's a metal buffalo. But at the gun range in Ridgeway, Pennsylvania, they have this, you know, every hundred yards, there's a different animal and a thousand yards is a buffalo. And I can hit that buffalo at a thousand yards with my 30 out six. Now, a 30 out six is a very powerful rifle and you don't really need it for shooting squirrels. And so you might think of yourself as in the world of financial planning, 
you're not a buffalo, you're not an elephant, you're not a large game, you're just getting started. So you may think this is overkill, and you might be right. So here's what we're gonna do about that. As we move forward through the course, I'm going to add some scenarios, I'm gonna add some cases, I'm gonna add some what ifs. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you use your imagination to shift some things around in your financial plan so that at some point when you're ready, you're going to be able to take your birthday and exchange it for my birthday. Now, I'm going to ask you to use my birthday for a specific reason, regardless of what scenario or what you want to envision for your financial future, you'll be able to do that using my birthday. But I need you to use my birthday because I need to know that we're, we're at least staying in the ballpark in terms of some of the metrics that will be involved in building all the financial plans. Otherwise, there's no way I'll be able to grade your final capstone. So my birthday, I'm going to put it in the chat, is 415. 04 15 1962. So that's my birthday. So as we move forward, what I'm going to invite you to do, not now, not until you're ready, once you get to the point where you're thinking, okay, I want to really push the envelope on this capstone assignment and I want to put myself 25 years ahead and I want to see what really would move the needle for me then. That's what we're gonna do, and you're gonna be able to do that simply by changing your birthday and get, making yourself old, like me. So you would be 58 years old today if your birthday was 41562. So I hope, I hope to, that you, you hear what I'm saying and think, oh, we're getting ready to play a game. We're getting ready to do some, some like laboratory testing on financial planning, and that's what I want to do. Now, right now, you're using your data. So the information that you're putting in here needs to be your information because your first couple of assignments are going to just be, you know, how accurately can you enter your own information? And so don't jump ahead just yet, but very soon after we get through this week, in fact, you're going to have the opportunity to start to use this tool in a way that I think can be very, very helpful. And it certainly will be more fun than if you're just sitting there trying to make a financial plan um, be a meaningful exercise when you don't really have, maybe you don't even have a job, maybe you don't have any cash flow, maybe you don't have any savings. And None of that really, it's all abstract to you. So I want this course and especially this capstone to be something that's not just abstract, but something that you put yourself into in a way that helps you get it and understand the value of financial planning because financial planning is a tremendously valuable discipline. And it is sometimes overwhelming to people uh, because there's so many moving parts, and I get that. And so the solution to that, at least my opinion, what I believe is that the solution to that is a little bit of time on task, and we take one step at a time, and that's what we're going to do. So you see these are the steps, and you're going to walk through those steps, and this week's assignment, which is worth 60 points, and if as if you listen to Monica, you know that if you do it early, you'll probably get 70 or 75 points. If you do it early and you do it well. So just like every other assignment, I'm asking you to do a little article. And uh, if you haven't looked at the instructions in Blackboard, I don't know that I made that really clear that it's supposed to be an article. But if you're listening to me at this moment, week four, your assignment, um, it you can make that a little article. It's only needs to be 400 words. It doesn't need to be very long, but just make it something easy to read. And you're going to have to know how to do screenshots. So most of you already do. If you need help, I'll be happy to do a tutorial for how to do screenshots. But uh, that's going to be part of every assignment, every assignment in your capstone. So, okay. Again, if you haven't chimed in with your role, please do that. 
and I'm gonna take a look at some questions and get caught up on those. Um, Adriana, are we going to have to complete all of the weeks up to week three in the portal in order to unlock the material for our assignment? Also, does week three and week four have to be 800 to 1,000 words? Are these two assignments based on completion and attaching of all of our PDFs? Not sure I understand the last part, but let me answer those. Those are great questions, and I want to answer them um, clearly. So the first one, are we going to have to complete all the weeks up to week three? The answer to that is yes. The way I've set up the course is to be sequential. So you can't actually go from the course and jump right into week four if you haven't taken, uh, you know, the getting started lesson one, lesson two, lesson three, and now we're in lesson four, week four. So here's what I would encourage you to do if you're struggling with that and you don't have time. I'm going to just show you something that we set. I set this up on purpose. I naturally want you to watch the video. So Brent, I hear you. I think I hear you. If you could mute yourself, that'd be great. Or I could mute you. Never mind. I muted you. Okay, so uh, what you see here is we're in the very first step one, register. If you hit play here, it's going to start playing, but you can fast forward that. Or you could go to settings and hit playback speed and just watch. This is what I do. If I'm watching a video, even if I'm paying for the course, I'm going to play it fast. So you're welcome to do that. You don't have to spend 10 whole minutes in this course. I'm this less, or it's actually just five minutes. So I guess I had, eh, not sure if you can hear that. I can hear it. I don't like hearing myself, but anyway, so hopefully that helps. Uh, that was first part of your question. Let me see if I can get, Sorry, I lost the chat box. So the first part of your question is yes, that's the answer. You have to get every lesson that's before today's lesson completed, but you can do that by fast forwarding the videos because that's what unlocks the next lesson. Um, and then does week three and week four have to be 800 to 1,000 words? So yes, week three does. No, week four can be 300, 400, I don't really care, honestly. I just want to make sure you did the assignment, that you've completed your profile, and that you, you know, share with me a little bit about your experience in that, and um, whatever else was in that assignment. But it's very brief. I just needed you to create something, upload it to uh, Blackboard, so that I have a basis for giving you a grade. So the screenshots are important this week because that's how you're really showing me that you completed each step of the setup process. And again, what I'm looking for is very simply, I want to make sure that you've entered your family profile, your income, savings, net worth, expenses, and goals. And then from there, Next week, I'm going to open up uh, the budget for you. I'm going to take you to, uh, so you'll be able, you'll have these different elements. You may already have them. If you've shown some progress in your planning portal, I've already opened these, so way to go. So you can start working ahead for the next capstone assignment, which is the balance sheet, liquidity, budget, and so you'll see here, by the way, budgeting, it's only available if you link at least one account. So you're going to have to link accounts to do that. So how do you do that? How do you link accounts? Wow. Where do you go to link accounts? Uh, if you can figure that out, then you will be my hero. So I'm not going to show you how to do that because it was part of your instruction already, but we're in Billy's portfolio here and Billy is going to become the star of the show. So I'm going to do a little bit of fun things on my end in terms of how we develop your capstone over the course and Billy is going to be one of our one of our case studies. Billy and Sally uh, will be so 
I just showed you the answer that I raised before. Does anybody see it? Can you see the answer? How do you link an account? It's not hard. So Billy has linked some accounts and he just did that by going here and linking the account. But if you want the budget to work, um, if you want this budget, which by the way, it's not optional um, because as I told you at the beginning of the course, one of the most important lessons that we did from the beginning of this course is we required students to have uh, a spending plan, a 30 day and then a 60 day. And that was kind of like your final exam. And to do that, you had to use something like mint.com or you had to do it manually. In this online course, there is no manual, uh, you know, we, we're not really offering that option. So the only way you're going to be able to create to complete this is by linking your major credit card, whatever you use to do your spending, you're going to want to link that. I would encourage you to link all of your accounts just like you would uh, if you were using mint.com. This is every bit as secure. It's actually more secure than mint.com and you don't get advertisements. This is a uh, a premium platform. You're getting it for nothing really. Um, but this is something that clients pay a lot of money for the ability to aggregate and link your accounts. But you have to do that so that you have the budgeting component. So back to the basics. So your assignment this week to answer your question, some screenshots. This is what I'm looking for. I want to just see that you've actually uh, put some information, the right information into your uh, your portal into your and these are called cards so i don't want to rehash everything that's already in your lessons but let me go back to the chat and make sure i answered that question completely that was a great question so yeah that's the answer on the 800 to 1000 words um and i'm not sure about attaching all of your pdfs i will say this that um, typically, I've always required that whatever you turn in it be a PDF um, because if I try to open your assignment and you used, I use Pages, which is like Word, but it's a Mac tool. So I have to have another program for Word. And if you have a different version, I have a different program. It's very slow and takes a lot of time. So I've always said only I would only accept PDFs, but this semester I'm cool. I've upgraded my systems and I can take Word documents. But what I don't want and what makes it much more challenging is if you have multiple documents. So um, the question was, I'm not sure exactly what you meant, Adriana, about these PDFs, but in the future, if you have more than one document, please take those and make one document typically the easiest way to do that is to make a pdf just export and then you can merge and if you don't know how to do that let me know and i'll find you a resource on youtube probably i'll google it and i'll send it to you or you could google it yourself it's not hard so anyway so screenshot question um you meant screenshots okay yeah yeah so in this case you're going to do a word document you're going to answer all the stuff that I put in the, ins in the uh, in instructions to the assignment. And then you're going to take your screenshots and paste them right in so that, you know, the section on your goals. You're going to give me, you know, a highlight summary of your goals. And then you're going to show me a screenshot of where you entered those goals into your planning portal. So that's what I'm looking for. And again, as we move forward, we're going to get into many more things that many more components of the financial plan, and I'm gonna teach you one step at a time. Right now, we're taking baby steps, getting everybody set up, getting everybody ready to move forward, but our cadence, the speed of our steps, is about to increase. So we've spent a good deal of time just getting set up, and I appreciate your help, but we're gonna jump into investments. Probably, it's you know a very important part of the course, and this is where I'm gonna teach you about investing. And I think you're going to like it. I always feel like Donald Trump when I say that. I think you're going to like it. I think you're going to love it. It's going to be awesome. But I really do. I think you're going to love it. I think it's going to be awesome. It's the one thing that in the past students have been 
extremely generous with their compliments about what they learned in the course and how it can help them in their life. So I'm, I always love teaching investments and it is one of three uh, major categories of the course. You may go think back to the three laws of personal finance and I'm gonna take a minute to tell a story. This is the story about the three laws of personal finance. And so when we started teaching this course uh, almost 10 years ago, I wasn't, I'd never taught a college course and I was thinking what would, what would I really, what would be the major goals, the major things I would want my students to gain from the course. And I was really struggling with that. And I had some friends, all very successful, very good friends. And one of them, his name was Sam Baird. Sam is no longer with us. A couple of years ago, he passed. He got cancer in his spinal fluid and it took him so quickly. He was a very healthy guy and fit. Anyway, Sam we, I, you know, I asked my friends, we had this coffee meeting every Friday morning at 7 a.m. at Einstein's Coffee in Clear Lake, Texas. My friend Greg Claraday and Sam and Ben Cowart, we would sit and drink coffee and talk about whatever was going on in our life. And so what was going on in my life was I had this great opportunity to become an adjunct professor at the Bauer College of Business teaching a topic that I was passionate about, personal finance. But I was struggling with, what is it I'm gonna teach? I mean, it was just, where do you start? Where do you end? What is the goal? And my friend Sam, he said, he said, Jim, there's really only one thing that you need to teach them. And he, he didn't use the term, the law of spending and saving, but he told me in no uncertain terms, if you can teach your students that the key to building well is to get their spending under control so that they spend less than they earn so they can save more for what really matters in their life. If you can teach them that, there's nothing more valuable you can teach them. My friend Sam, he's a beautiful guy. He's from Ireland. So imagine sitting there and he weighed about 75 pounds, no, probably 130 pounds. He was a very small framed fellow but he was so full of power and passion and he wore a pinky ring. He was an engineer, just, just an amazing guy. We went to church together and we studied the Bible together and we didn't agree on much, <laughs> but we had the best arguments. And uh, anyway, Sam was very clear about what I needed to teach. And he was so sure, so confident, so convicted about what he believed. And he came from Ireland. Did I mention that? People from Ireland are very stoic. They they're like grew up in a perpetual depression. So when it comes to managing money, they're very frugal. Sam was very frugal. He had, he was definitely a millionaire, but he was, he spent money like he didn't have any. And so, you know, I listened to Sam. And where I wasn't real certain, where I wasn't perfectly clear about what I wanted to teach, I took Sam's word for it. And that became the first law of personal finance, which is the law of spending and saving. Spend less than you earn so you can save more for what matters most. But that didn't seem like it would scratch my itch completely because the truth is, if you do that, if you save and save, you still need a few other tools in the toolbox. So I came up with the second law of personal finance, which turned out to be the most popular portion of this course, which is the law of tax advantaged investing. And the key there is investing. So over the next few weeks, I'm going to begin to teach you about investing. And the idea of tax advantaged investing is especially important, especially, especially, especially if your birthday happens to be April 15th, which I hope some of you adopt that birthday for the remainder of the course at some point, because, <clears throat> excuse me, April 15th happens to be tax day. 
and I was really born on April 15th, and April 15th is tax day, except for this year. Does anybody know what tax day is this year? I'm going to take a drink of water while you chat in. When are your taxes due? Wow. Azan, how did you know that? Helen. So why is it July 15th? Yes, that's the right answer. And what does it mean? <clears throat> yep, because of COVID. It's because of COVID. So the IRS made this rule that you can now um, file your taxes instead of April 15th, July 15th for 2020. And they made a whole host of other tax tweaks that are really relevant only to 2020. My specialty as a financial advisor is retirement tax planning strategies. So one of those strategies works around the tax filing deadline. And because it's, uh, you got to pay the government every year on April 15th. Yeah, you don't like it, but I'm going to teach you how to avoid paying the government. That's the whole purpose of tax advantaged investing. And one of the benefits of the extension to July 15th is that this year, instead of April 15th, which is come and gone, you still have until July 15th to set up and fund your Roth IRA account. So when we talk about tax advantaged investing, the most like the sweet spot, the golden bucket, which will actually be a thing when I start to teach this, the golden bucket is a Roth IRA. It's tax free investing. So the idea of tax advantaged investing, the tax advantage part is actually even more important than the investing part because I could teach you how to make investments like a rock star. Actually, I couldn't. <laughs> I can teach you how to make investments like a, like a good, solid risk manager, which I can and will do. But let's say you're really super good at investing and you can pick stocks and you can pick, you know, you can time the market and you can use technical analysis and fundamental analysis and all these other tools and you can really do a great job in getting quick returns. If you don't plan your investments around good tax planning strategies, you're not, you're not gonna move the needle near as much. So trust me, taxes are what move the needle more than investment returns. Now we wanna do both. I'm gonna teach you how to do both. In fact, I'm gonna teach you four investment strategies that coordinate the tax advantage part with the investing part, but four investment strategies that are designed to maximize your returns and minimize your risk. And I'm going to tell you what they are right now, because every semester that I've been teaching this course, I try to introduce the, the really important stuff because I introduce it, you start to think about it, and then I introduce it again and review it and you think about it some more and then I teach it and you start to really get it and then I review it and now you're ready to maybe start to apply it and so the four strategies that are designed to maximize your investment returns and minimize your investment risk number one is diversification you might want to write this down just so you can Google it and start to get a little more familiar with it. Diversification is number one. Number two is asset allocation. And I'm going to teach you these. This is not the lesson. This is just an introduction to the lesson. I'm going to name the, the four, and give you a chance to start to become aware of what they are. Asset allocation is hands down the most important determinant of a portfolio's returns or outcomes. So asset allocation is very important. And I'm going to have to teach you about asset classes, which is what you see on your screen, U.S. equities, international equities. So you're going to have to know a little bit about different asset classes to really understand what it means to use asset allocation as a strategy to get better returns and to manage the risk in your portfolio. So I gotta teach you that, and I will. So that's the second strategy. 
designed to maximize returns and minimize risk is asset allocation. Number three is one of my favorite, and it is, in my opinion, hands down, the most powerful investment strategy designed to maximize return and minimize risk. And the third strategy is dollar cost averaging. I'm gonna tell you a story about Farmer Joe and his cows. And in fact, I'm gonna give you a copy. You're gonna all get a copy of Make Your Money Count. I owe you that and I'm gonna get it in your hands. But throughout the course, I'm gonna give you the story of Farmer Joe so you can read it before we do the class on investment strategies. But I'm going to tell you a story about Farmer Joe so that I promise you, you're going to understand how to apply that third strategy of dollar cost averaging so that over your lifetime as an investor, you're going to absolutely have better returns with a much better ability to manage risk. So those are the first three, diversification, asset allocation, dollar cost averaging. And the fourth is kind of like the second. Instead of asset allocation, the fourth strategy to maximize returns and minimize risk is portfolio rebalancing. So you can see, if you look at this screen, you've got a 60-40 portfolio. And that means you see the colors and you, if you mouse over it in your plan, you'll see all these asset classes and the percentage as I'm scrolling over that. And so what happens over time is US equities may explode. And so your portfolio, instead of 38.6, turns out to have 54% or something like that. So you, there you go. Thanks, Randy. Um, Dad P, D-A-D-P, that's the acronym, Dad P. So, Portfolio rebalancing is just taking this portfolio right here after it gets out of balance and rebalancing it back to the asset allocation that you started with. And by doing that, ironically, you're actually activating a form of dollar cost averaging, which you will understand very well when we teach that lesson. All that to say, investment management, tax advantaged investing, second law of personal finance. It's the second major objective I have in this course. And that brings us to the third law of personal finance, which is the law of purpose and commitment. And, you know, all I can say at this point is you guys have demonstrated to me that you, you're committed to learn about managing money. You have a reason to do that. And I can't say that I know what your purpose is, but I hope that you, I hope you think deeply about your purpose. And I want you to read chapter three. My favorite chapter in the book is called Powered by Purpose. And that's going to be part of your assignment coming up, Powered by Purpose. It's my favorite chapter. But before we get there, we've got first memories of money. And next week's assignment, in fact, I'll tell you a little bit about next week's assignment. First memories of money. What what time is it? So I want to, this is a story about your first memory of money. So you, most of you are younger than I am. And this question typically resonates with people of all ages. If, well, not all ages, it wouldn't resonate with a child because I'm going to ask you the question, what's your first memory of money? Maybe, maybe it's, the first paycheck you got, first job you worked where you got a real paycheck and saw that they took taxes out. Maybe it's the first time you worked at a neighbor's house and maybe raked leaves or shoveled snow if you didn't live in Texas or, you know, something you did. Maybe it was work around the house that you got an allowance for. Just what is your first memory of money? I want you to think about that because in your assignment, I'm going to ask you to share that. And just say, yeah, this is my first memory of money. So for me, and I'll share because I wrote about it, Make Your Money Count, a couple of my first memories. What I remember when I was very young, we grew up, I grew up in a trailer park. And I remember my mother one day 
we went to the mailbox together and she got to the mailbox and I had no idea what was in the mailbox, but some mail was in the mailbox, but my mom just started crying. And I was a little kid. I can't remember if I was four or five. It was before school, you know, before I started going to school. And uh, I remember, I remember that. I remember my mom crying and I, I was, I was distressed because my mom was crying and I wanted to fix it for her, but I didn't know how to fix it for her. But she was sad and it had to do with the mail. And so I asked her what, what, you know, I asked her, mom, why are you crying? And she said, it's nothing. She said, I was just, I was expecting a check and it didn't come. And, and I'm like, wow, that's a weird thing to be sad about. And I thought about it for about well, I don't know how long I thought about it, but I thought about it until I came up with a solution. So my solution was to go, we lived in a trailer park. Have you ever been to a trailer park? Trailer parks have like a whole line of mailboxes, right? There's not just one, like if you live in a house, there's a whole line. And it was a big, big trailer park, at least to a little guy. So I went to the mailboxes, the line of mailboxes, and I just started opening them up one at a time. And I was looking for, I had no idea what a check looked like, but I figured I'd know it when I saw it. Just kept looking and looking until somebody discovered this kid opening mailboxes and lo and behold, turns out it's a federal offense to go messing with somebody's mail. I had no idea. I got a whipping. My mom had to whip me. All I was trying to do, all I was trying to do was solve her money problem because I was looking for a check for my mom. So I remember that, that that story about that mailbox money was, you know, that really happened to me. And I remember it. And when, when, when my mentor asked me the question, what's your first memories of money? You know, I got like five different memories that popped into my head, but one of them was that mailbox and how my mother felt when she didn't have enough money to pay the bills and how I wanted to fix it for her. And now I'm 58 years old. Remember my birthday is 4, 15, 62, which makes me 58 years old. You knew that. So at 58 years old, what I've come to believe is that when I was a kid and I had that experience trying to find money in the mailboxes for my mom, I'm the same guy I was when I was that little guy. I'm still trying to fix problems for people that I care about, people that I love by making more money. Now, that's not necessarily a good thing. It's not even really something that can be done. You can't really solve problems with money. But on the other hand, you know, life can be a little better if you have a little more money. And so that's been a natural focus for me throughout my life is to, you know, do everything I can to make more money. And I'm not saying that's good. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying it's the truth. And it's something that I discovered when I started to think about my first memories of money. And so that's what I want you to do. I want you to think about your first memory of money and what that felt like? What was your experience? What was going on in your life? What did you do with that money that you got? You know, you, you may remember that. And so that's part of next week's assignment, not this Friday, but next Friday. And on top of that, not just your first memory of money, but you're going to do an interview. And I want to talk about the interview before we close out for today, because this interview is it's a very special i would say even potentially could be kind of a sacred moment between you and the person that you choose to interview because what i want you to do is i want you to look around your life and not your roommate not really i don't want you to go to a friend I want you to go to someone who's like my age and they don't have to be my age, but they need to be older than you, like a generation older. So a, a parent, ideally a parent, either your mom or your dad or an uncle or an aunt or a grandparent. 
So those are the like the levels of family relationships that I'm asking you to consider. And, you know, it, what I want you to think about is who is that person that you're already have in mind who you think would be a good role model financially? Like you look at their life, you see the work that they did, the responsibility that they demonstrated, the sense of purpose and commitment that they lived out and how it affected their family and the people around them and maybe their community. That person, that person is the one I want you to reach out to and ask for an interview. The interview can be very short and you'll see the instructions that you get in Blackboard. But the basic idea, one of the things I want you to do is ask them the question about their first memory of money and listen. And this is the part of this exercise, this assignment that I really want to, I really want you to hear me because when you start to ask the questions that I'm going to ask you to ask this person that you chose as a person that you respect, that you want to learn from, when you get into that interview, what I want you to know is that it could be a very emotional moment for them. For one thing, they have this young person who's coming to them saying, I want you to share some wisdom with me. And that is an honor for most people. And they will be moved by that very likely. But on the other hand, you're going to be asking questions that may have some pain attached. And that's okay. Be ready for that. Be respectful of that. Be aware of that. Be present with that person as you ask that question and those questions. Because what you may discover is that they've made some mistakes and hopefully they learned from them. And the fact that you chose them to be the person you interview probably is proof that even though they may have made some mistakes, even though maybe the mistakes they made cause pain to remember and maybe even some shame, even though you're there to kind of encourage them by saying, hey, you, you, you did good. You, you did good, and I want to learn from you. So I have no idea how your interview is going to go, but I do know that I'm going to ask you to ask some questions that can be very uh, emotional for people. And so you can have this experience with this other human being. And I know you're probably going to want to do it over the phone, and that's okay. But try and set the stage. Try and make sure that you, you're in a distraction-free zone to the best of your ability. And if you can do it over a cup of coffee, that would be even better. You'll probably get extra points for that. Actually, I can't really give you extra points for that because that would be penalizing the students who selected the right person, the best person, but that person is in Ohio or somewhere else. So, okay, so that is your assignment for next week. I'll post it in Blackboard. And what we'll do is we'll go in and out of different types of assignments. We will always come back to the capstone because that's where we're gonna take steps in the technical investing, financial planning side as we build your financial plan from scratch from the beginning to the end. And I just wanna remind you that this platform that you've been given in this course is one that you're gonna to get to have for 12 months. So there's no additional cost. And I hope you'll take advantage of it for 12 months. And um, at some point, I'm going to offer to have a one-on-one -on -one kind of coaching call. And I'll post the link to my calendar when the time seems right for you to reach out, schedule some time if you want. This is totally uh, something you have access to. So you'll, you know, we'll focus on your plan and I'll answer any questions you have and help you identify the best strategies possible for you to give you the best possible chance of success for whatever the goals are that you've chosen. So be thinking about your goals. Those goals, as I said in one of my lessons this last week, it's, it seems really difficult to sit here and put a, an assignment online and say, hey, go come up with some goals. But the truth is, typically when I meet with someone 
and we have conversations like first memory of money that by the time we get to the goal setting, I've discovered so much about the person and helped them self-discover the real purpose for their life and, and the things in their life that will give them meaning and the things that we know money can help facilitate in their life, things that matter. By the time we get to that point in the conversation, it's, it's kind of like coaching them to identify and clarify the best goal. And they've already done that through the conversation. So I don't get to do that with you, and I regret that. But hopefully these conversations um, will help you think about what are the goals that will really move the needle on your life in the next 10, 20, 30 years? Because that's the real question. And I asked you at the beginning, Think about five years from now. What kind of progress would you have to have in your life to feel really good? But what would you need to achieve in the next five years to feel good about the progress you made? So that was just a question to kind of hopefully stimulate you to think about goals. Goals. So not just five years from now, but if you can, if you can think about 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 30 years from now, what would be the goals? that would make your life better. And that's what, we're, that's what we wanna put into your financial plan. So I hope this is starting to gel a little bit. I hope it's starting to give you uh, a sense of reality about what's possible and how financial planning can be helpful. So thank you. I will post this on YouTube. And if you have any questions, you might wanna post them in the chat box now because I'm not seeing any, I may have missed them. If, if you posted a question and I missed it, please repost it, but I, I see two new messages. Just to verify for week three's assignment, the 800 to 1000 words for the brief narrative commentary, commentary section. Yeah, 800 to 1000 words, that's for the whole. Well, you know what? Because we did a credit report, right, Laura? might take some effort to get 800 to 1,000 words. So, yeah, I won't. How many words do you think would be good? Have you done your assignment yet, Laura? How many words did you get? If you tell me, I might change the assignment requirements right quick. But, yeah, I, don't, I, won't, I won't penalize you for having too few words um, for this week. Now, this week's assignment, week four, it's a much lower number of words. You don't need so many words. I'm looking more for screenshots. So a few words and a few screenshots and you'll be good to go. Just show me that you've done the work in your planning portal and completed each of the sections, the modules, whatever you want to call them in building your portal. Uh, so very good. Any other questions? Speak now or? Um, week three was due last Friday, Abriana. Uh, should have been due last Friday. Every week we have a new assignment and every week it's due on Friday at midnight. So this week is week four due. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. It says three to four are due this Friday. Well, somebody made a mistake. So you have an extra week to do three. Okay, Randy, I got it, John. Okay, cool. 619. That means I've got a lot of, I'm going to get a ton of stuff to grade this Friday, which is going to make my life so much fun. So, okay. Yeah. Well, just so you know, um, no, uh, Laura, don't change your birthday yet. First, let's get through the first couple of sections where you're putting in your goals and you get to see the, you know, your financial plan and operation. Once we get to the point where you've got that down, then I'll give you the, kind of the go ahead to change your birthday and we'll start working on some more advanced planning strategies so you can see how how much more valuable financial planning is when you have more assets to plan around because that's one of the things we're going to do is change your birthday and pretend you got your dream job and you saved this much for retirement and now you have this much in your account and you're actually a millionaire your net worth. And so now we have to apply some good financial planning strategies. So that's why we're going to change your birthday at some point, but not yet. Uh, 
Thanks, Alicia. I appreciate that a lot. Um, and Sam was amazing. And I miss him. So, you know, when you guys do this interview this coming week, just be thinking about that. I've lost so many people in the last, since I've been teaching this class. Lost my dad last year, my uncle, my best client, um, my aunt. A lot of people I lost in the last year, and I haven't lost anybody to COVID um, yet. So anyway, just be thinking about that. Everybody you get to be who you get to care for, love them well while you can, because you don't know how long you get. So have a great week. I don't see any other questions. Oh, for the interview, if we don't have anyone that we really look up to, but we know someone that has come a long way financially from when they grew up, you know, Morgan, that would work. Um, so, yeah, um, that would work. Ideally, though, I think there's a lot of reasons to try and go with someone in your family. Because the reason I say that is because in your family, there's a lot of secrets. <laughs> there's a lot of wisdom that will be very impactful. You may not know it now, but I promise you it's true. And so I don't want you to miss that. But yes, if you don't have someone that you know you feel good about going to in your family, you, you're, you can go to someone else. But you've got the right idea about who to go to. Uh, so Helen, I thought it was only one assignment each week. It is. It should be. Um, but apparently I put the wrong due date on last week's. So there should only be one assignment per week. Am I wrong about that? except that you have a due date that's incorrect because last week you posted week three for people to get ahead. Yeah, that's right. Oh, so are you saying that there's, that the assignment I posted yesterday should be the next week's assignment? Okay, that's, and then you posted week four on top of that. Okay, well, here's the deal. I will give you more time to do this week's assignment, but we have a thousand points we have to knock out. So if you look at the syllabus, which isn't really accurate, and I'm making it up as I go, but if you look at the syllabus, you'll see we had multiple assignments in a couple of different weeks because we had to make up points. So um, I'm going to just call that accident a mistake that was a good thing. So yeah, typically we're going to have one assignment a week, but we do have a couple of weeks we need to double up just to make sure you get a thousand points. Again. To get an A in this class, you need 950 points. I promise I'm going to do my part to give you plenty of points. And hopefully by now you see they don't take a lot of time. The big idea, the capstone, we're going to be working on throughout the semester. You get points for each piece you do. And then you get 200 points if you actually did a great job on your capstone. So, yep, appreciate the fact that your assignments are a little confusing at this point. I, I'm sorry for that. But... Typically, one assignment a week due on Friday at midnight, but we do need to have some extra assignments to make sure you get enough points. And I'll be posting some extra credit assignments. So hope that helps. Thanks for your cards and letters. And one last thing before I go, <clears throat> I have my cohort at U of H. We're trying to figure out how to get this in your hands for those of you who can come on campus. So that would be great. Otherwise, I got to get your address and mail this to you, which I will be happy to do. But at this point, I'm just giving you the digital content. But I owe you this. I owe you a copy of the book and the actual blueprint, which is really the old school way of doing a financial plan. And I designed this many years ago, and it's got all of the same elements that you're seeing digitally. So. It's pretty cool where we've come from. I'm pretty proud of this. Back in the day, this was cutting edge. And now we do it mostly online. So anyway, I owe you these two things, and you will get them. Just wanted to give you an update that I haven't forgotten. So thank you, guys. Um, so a recommended word count for the brief narrative. Randy, I said 400 words. I don't care. Whatever it takes. If it's 200 words, it don't take much to do 200 words, man. If you do it with Siri, the way I would do it, like you can get the text on the paper real quick, and then it just takes a few more clicks to format it. 
but I don't care how many words. I just want to know you did the assignment. So I make, I make it up as I go in terms of the number of words. I don't care. All right. Thanks for the question, Randy. <clears throat> I didn't mean to be flippant. I just, I don't, I don't really know, but um, cool. Okay. Y'all have a great, great rest of your week. If there's anything you need from me, reach out. I appreciate so much uh, being able to be in your group me. And I will start to post the link to this course in GroupMe for those of you who are using GroupMe. And uh, I do get the reminders, the chimes, and I try to respond quickly. So I appreciate that's a new element in the class for me. And I'm, I'm having fun with that. So thank you, Laura. Y'all take care. Till next time.